I'm here in San Diego with Mark for the launch of the 2025 Toyota Camry. It is an all new Camry despite some of the misnomers of this just being a reskinned, slightly evolved product. We spent a lot of time with the chief engineer who walked us through how he improved this car from a technical perspective. It is still on TNGAK. However, let's start with drivetrain first. The Camry now only comes with one drivetrain. It is their latest iteration or fifth gen hybrid setup with a 2.5 liter in eCVT. Starting with a battery pack, it has 68 modules, it now weighs 25 kilograms. It is a smaller, lighter, more efficient pack. Same goes for the electric motor setup. They are more compact, they are a more efficient setup. For horsepower, you can get this as either a 228 horsepower front wheel drive model or have an on-demand all-wheel drive setup which boosts the power to like 232. The estimated manufacturer miles per gallon is high 40s. They claim 51. We're seeing high 30s, high 40s, depending on driving conditions. The primary benefit is this is now a value add to the consumer. In the past, the base engine was a internal combustion four popper. Now you only get a hybrid and it gets more power, better fuel efficiency, and the eCVT really is not that bad to live with. Now let's talk about the goals of this car, starting with dynamics. In the past, the Camry was known as the old man sort of luxury box. You bought it because it was reliable and it was comfortable. The thing the engineer wanted to do, and this is one of the first times, if not the first time, a Camry was led by an American engineering team, for an all new Camry at least. They had a miter model year change where he led them in the past, but for this generation, it is an American product. He wanted this to feel more dynamic, much like Accords in the past. So he focused on how he can improve that. Sway bars, damper tuning, steering tuning, spring tuning, all of that works together to make this a more engaging car. Now, they do do specific suspension tuning based on sport or luxury trims. Sport trims in the front wheel drive models are close to about 20% stiffer overall. Obviously, they run higher spring rates in the back versus the front. The sport vehicles also get a more sophisticated damper that can deal with the higher spring rates. It's still a very compliant car. The all wheel drive cars are about 16% stiffer when they're sport versus uh, a luxury trim level. The other focuses of this vehicle from a technical perspective is reducing NVH through aerodynamic tweets like on the roof rails or the mirrors, or the doors. The other thing to talk about as well is they run acoustic glass in the higher trim levels. The last big technical improvement is the way the brakes are implemented. They are not brake by wire, however, they added a brake booster before the VSC module to basically decouple the regen from the brake pedal. It also allows them to have better control over some of the safety setups, and they feel that this is a more linear and progressive brake pedal feel. So with that, Mark's gonna walk you through all of the interior improvements. Thanks, Jack. And, you know, to reiterate the fact that Toyota's constantly trying to evolve the Camry, they haven't given up on the sedan. So a lot of the improvements that have been done on the American engineering side are also from help of Toyota Japan. The K platform has been updated and you're seeing it being used in the Crown. The, the primary difference here between the Crown and this car is you're getting the brand new version of their hybridization system. So this is like one of the first cars that gets it. So you're getting all of their modern technology, chassis improvements, their new focus on dynamics, at least in the Camry. And you notice it immediately when you get on the inside of this car and the outside as well. I feel like there's a level of cohesion here that the last generation didn't have. The outside was aggressive, but you know some of the overstyling on the front and the rear end, um, and then some of the materials on the inside didn't really feel all that great or well thought out. This fixes almost all of that. Even on the lower trim level like that we're in, you know the fabric choice, the fabric seats or the fabric inlays on the seats feel really good. The seats feel far more compliant and less stiff than they used to. And when you move up in the trim levels, yes, you're getting better quality materials, but even when you spend less, like in this, it's not a penalty box. All the HVAC controls are physical, the shifter's physical, the placement of certain things for storage are logical where you're not you know, trying to twist around to get at things. Things aren't flying around in here. You still have space for a cup holder. Because of Toyota Connected and the various iterations that they've done, the infotainment is far more integrated into the dashboard than it has been in the past. It's not completely sticking up. The dashboard space is well utilized and smaller. Um, and unlike some of the Crown products, the visibility in here is better. The door panel is lower, so you have more side glass. And while it might be a little bit noisier in terms of NVH on the lower trim levels, it's still 
feels way better than cars of the past. And overall, the usability of this car is such a highlight. If you're one of those people that is absolutely turned off by the over-technification of modern commodity cars with overuses of screen technology, yes, you have a big screen in here, but the infotainment largely blends into the background and it works. The gauge cluster is still more traditional. It's set in the dash. You don't have the threaded screen. You're not overwhelmed by a bunch of lighting in here. It's a great experience for someone that just wants a car that is functional as an appliance, but also doesn't feel like a total shit box and they've, they've blended it all together here this is one of the best cameras they've ever done but we're going to briefly take this for a drive <laughs> well not so briefly and walk you through what they tried to change with the dynamic parts of driving it new camry mark SE front wheel drive hybrid. Oh, <laughs> listen to her sing. Yeah. Hybrid only now. You can either have this as front wheel drive or all wheel drive, like we discussed in the beginning of this video. We we touched on what their their goals were after spending some time with the chief engineer. They basically took the prior generation platform and tried to improve on the life of the car, meaning they wanted to give this thing a little bit more personality and soul. And I think from a driving perspective, particularly in this in all the sport grades, grades with the better dampers and higher spring rates surprisingly really pretty good to drive i mean you and i both spent time in this car the tofer drove us out to this event in one yeah we've so we've been in it as a passenger we both you and i both driven it up this mountain road what are your initial thoughts well we, i think it really helps to understand what they were trying to achieve and i think the, the big thing is because you know this is now more of a north American commanded car, I think they had the opportunity to, to, to strip away some of the Camry-ness of the older cars, which was super reliable, super boring, not dynamically good. And I think the last generation was better. It's it, it was still a better driving experience and they had like the TRD trim level and some of that. But the overall drivability of this car now is you can really whip it around. Yes. It's no longer like we complain about with the Sonatas and the K5s of the world where they really ride well and they drive they okay. They have no vehicle dynamics of any sort of limit. Yeah, exactly. This has really great body control and it's so well controlled and isolated while still not feeling like a boat. So you can whip this through corners better and it still feels really compliant. And I think the point of making it really good to drive, compliant, comfortable, and still feeling nimble is really hard to do. At this price point. At this price point, yeah. yeah. And this is something Camry has not been good at before. And now that it is, and you know, like I know everybody hates the comparison, but it's true. The, the Accord was always kind of like the driver's car sedan. It did that, but it was always a little bit noisier. So this car kind of now is really good dynamically to drive. It's not a snoozer while still riding good. And, you know, it is noisy in the lower trims. Yes. You know, we found that out on the highway. It is, there's a lot of NVH, a lot of tire noise. But as you go up the trim levels, if you get the acoustic laminated glass, it quiets it down quite a bit. It's still quieter than the prior generation vehicle. And you know, a couple seconds ago, you said it stripped away the camry -ness. It hasn't stripped away the things that made the Camry good in the past, which was usable car, good value proposition, good fuel economy in the hybrid trims. Now they're claiming the front wheel drive variants get in the high 40s, almost 50 miles per gallon, yeah. right out of the box for $28,000 big sedan. And because they've been doing the, the hybrid tech for so long between the long warranty for the battery pack and the electric motor, because I mean, you know, you are, if you are a, a prior generation Camry owner, you're moving from either the V6, which nobody bought, or the tried and true naturally aspirated four popper into this product. And I'm sure there's some uneasiness, but at least they're going to stand behind their car. I, I do think in every objective measurement, this is a better vehicle than it used to be. Well, well I think there's there's a few things. When I said strip away the camry is it's no longer a total snooze. Yeah, you, you know, like, you, you, know, you looked at a Camry it. Yeah. and it was a boring car. Let's be honest, it was like a total appliance. This, you, there, you can tell in terms of exterior interior design, this is on a far... They spent more time on that than they ever have. And I think just taking the dynamics of the previous car and improving them and the evolution of the car has improved so greatly. 
uh, that they cared about what they wanted to do with this. Not only from just the styling perspective, the driving perspective, it's more efficient, right? Like having that singular drivetrain, now they can focus all their energy out of refining that out to the place where you're gonna get great fuel economy, the performance is just good enough, and people are gonna bemoan the disappearance of the V6, which I somewhat agree because that was so tried and true, but we had that conversation with the Topher yeah. that, you know, they didn't really do much with the V6. It was a V6, but dynamically it wasn't that great to drive. It didn't make a ton of power, and the transmission tuning was so nerfed that it wasn't that engaging of a vehicle. So the loss of the V6, honestly, for this car is not that big of a deal, I think, yeah. other than the reliability. <clears throat> Yeah, and some of the, the, the acoustic warmness. I'm going to yes. be honest. They have quieted down this 2.5 with this hybrid setup. It's still drony sounding as you can hear it, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Um, most of the time, though, right, you know, if you live in a flatter state, you aren't in the canyons. You're not going to be full throttle for like 20 seconds. Yeah. Um, and the, 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 to be the handoff to between the hybrid and the, the gas is, is great. It's, it's transparent. Yeah. Like, it's the it's, this iteration is by far one of the best hybrid systems ever. In a commodity it, car. In a commodity car, because it just, it, it works without being annoying. It Granted, no four-cylinder really sounds, like, tremendous in, in a commodity car, but they've really isolated out the frequencies from the engine and the transmission that would be annoying and grating and it just kind of disappears and it just works really it just it works and when it goes into ev mode and you're sitting there in idle there's no like shuddering juddering weirdness it just continues to work like normal unlike some of the internal combustion cars that have start stop that shakes the entire car you feel like the like transmission yeah it just it's so well executed this car is such a joy to drive, honestly. I love it as a sedan, and I'm glad they're they're putting the money and effort into it. And yeah, when you push it in these corners, right, I mean, is this, you know, a tremendously engaging car? No, but the steering works well. You can sort of get it in and out of corners if you lean on the nose. I mean, basically, it has a, you know, a basic you know, understeer default, but the limits seem high enough, and the body control is actually pretty good with the bars. It's the, not a Camry yeah. of the past where you got into corners like this, and you're immediately, like, riding the brake. You know, you're not having to prepare to slow down the car because the body roll is so excessive. This car, the, again, the body control is great. It sets and sticks, and it gives you a lot of confidence of driving it. And it's still relatively engaging to drive for a car like this, and it needs to be. It's a sedan. Yeah. So I'm glad that they put that energy into it and made it a focus because it really did pay off. All right, so the Accord, let's play the game. I know this okay. isn't a comparison, but Accord looks worse. You and I both yes. agree. Uh, I think the seats are better in the Accord. I think it's close. I, I mean, it's going to depend on your body and the body size. The interior styling of this is better than the Accord. I, I think it is. I think there's more going on even in the base trims because you get the fabric overlay or you get the soft touch, touch textures. The physical buttons and switches are, I mean, it's hard to argue the Accords. They're really great and clicky. Yeah. But I think the traditional aspect of the ergonomics of how the things are laid out in here are a little bit better and more intuitive. And the infotainment, despite the Accord getting the new Android Automotive setup, I, I feel like this is far better executed overall. I think base model to base model, this is quieter than the, uh, sorry, the Accord is quieter than this. Yeah. And I, this is, is better to drive. I, I personally think it's better to drive, and I think the hybrid system is, is you know, that you're talking about a first, second generation for the Accord. This, this is, is a like, proven quantity. Yeah, this has been out forever. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna compare them objectively like that, I, I think this is a better car in, in this generation. Yeah, I, I'm leaning towards uh, what you're saying, but I, I do want to compare both of them. The Hyundai has, a, particularly the new Sonata, has a lot of style. We haven't driven it yet, yeah. but you already know the deficiencies of that brand. They have to overcome some of the negativity is associated with their older drivetrains. Yeah. We're not saying old, old. We're saying like a generation or two old. <laughs> right. yeah. And then, of course, all the stigma associated with the dealers and all that. But I guess before we hit on the final thoughts, Mark, I know this is a long conversation, but this is an important car. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I'm just glad to see a car like this in this price category that's really good. You know, I mean, you know, people complain constantly to us like, oh, you guys are only covering expensive car. I was like, e every car is too expensive. Every SUV, this is at a price point like yeah, 32, grand. 32 grand. It's 10,000 under the average transaction price in this era. And it drives great. It feels great. You feel like you're in a really good car, way more expensive than it is. And it, it drives really yeah, good. Yeah, and the inputs, I, I, I want to go back to the braking quickly because this is something they improved. We talked to Topher and he said there was a, a you know, he felt like he had to use more brake. I think because of their, their advancements in the pedal, it actually feels really direct. It feels like a stiff pedal. Yeah. And the amount you modulate is the amount you, you 
actually are slowing down the car. It feels more like a sports sedan setup and brake feel than, say, a you know traditional luxury boat. I would agree with that. I think what they did with the pedals is interesting because Toyota pedals on all, almost all their commodity cars have been super soft. You can almost push them down to the, the backstop of the pedal and like push it down to the ground. That's how soft they were. And I think they were trying to fix some of that so it wasn't so mushy. And the linearity of the pedal is... Uh, it's consistent all the way down no matter how much force you can predict it easily and then you don't have any of the regen or the blended regen in it to make it feel inconsistent so again they're trying to finesse all these things that make this a better driving car and that's why i really like it so with that mark let's head on the final thoughts sounds good jack We're here, the end of the Camry video, and things have turned around quite a bit since we were out here. We started not knowing anything about this, thinking it was just basically a reskinned old Camry. And in some cases it is, but there's the devil's in the details with most cars. I think the takeaway is what they set out to achieve, or the chief engineer wanted to do, was make this a better driving car. And in every single regard, which means you're gonna get the confidence to take this car out. And if you're in the mountains or the canyons, or you have a bunch of people and you don't have to settle down and put yourself into nursing home mode half the time you're driving it. The updated drivetrain, the updated iteration of the hybridization that they've done here, it feels smoother, it feels more refined. They've isolated out the four cylinder far more, which Toyota struggled with in the past. It's a car that you're gonna use as your daily driver, your family hauler with minimal fatigue and all the technology is finally working great as well. It's like all these things Toyota have struggled with in the past has now come full circle to this, which is one of the better looking Camrys inside and out and one of the better driving ones. So if you thought sedans were on their way out, well, this is proof that certain brands still care about it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next video.